When I loaded the fifth and final stone, I knew at that moment that I was the world's strongest man and that I had defended my title. The cover, world's strongest man for 2016, Brian Shaw! It's just an unreal, awesome feeling. We have so many great guys in this final. Brian, the returning champion, arguably the strongest man ever. Thor, the evolution of strength. Six foot nine, 400 pounds of lean machine. Eddie Hall, the beast, he's back. But then there's some other great new faces. Kieliszkowski, the Polish wonder kid. Lissus, my goodness, he's probably the most gymnastic talented athlete we've ever had in a final of World's Strongest Man. And some old faces too, Lawrence Charlotte. We thought he was down and out last year with injury, but he's back with a bang. And I think we have perfect conditions. So just a beautiful country. The weather's spot on. So no excuses for these fellas. I think this is going to be uh, one of the best World's Strongest Man contests there's ever been. Brian Shaw has got to be one of the most professional athletes I've ever met. If there's anything that can be done to make himself better, he's done it. If there's a machine that can make his grip 1% stronger, Brian's got it. Because given those little edges, there's, there's 1 and 2% here, there and everywhere, add up to the perfect athlete. And that's what Brian is. He's an absolute perfectionist. I think it's a nice fit with Botswana. You know, you've got the, you know, the, the giants of the natural world, uh, and then you've got the giants of our world. Here they are. The 2016 World's Strongest Man is the Super Bowl. It's our pinnacle of the sport. And, you know, coming in, there's a lot of men that train very hard to win this competition uh, and that come in wanting to win. I think the strongest people in the finals will be, for sure, Brian Shaw. Brian is technical. He thinks and works things through very well. He's smart. He's the biggest guy out there. The strongest guy out there. The only thing is, I think he lacks a little bit of speed and endurance. So eventually I can beat him through speed, mostly. Obviously a lot of us know each other and you know who's the favorite. And for me, I break it down based on the events and who's gonna be my main competition. And I would say with the events that were chosen in the final, um, I was really looking at Hofthor uh, as a main competitor. Brian Shaw, I would definitely say he is, he is the, the main guy I have to, have to beat. He is, he, has, you know, he is good in all of the events. Forbes Johnson is probably one of the most gifted strength athletes on the planet. Six foot nine, a natural 350 pound body weight. But four has fell into the world of publicity and fame. Uh, and I think that's been his only downfall so far. I, I genuinely think four can and will win World Strongest Man one day, but he's got to, he's got to be damn right lucky because he's putting too much time into his film career at the minute. And then Eddie Hall was kind of a, a question mark for me. Eddie Hall is just a monster of a man with the most stubborn nature. You know, his, his strength is his strength, but uh, very much so a lack of technique, lack of speed, lack of endurance. So I'll beat him, eventually at least. You know, there's a mix of other competitors that, that really they can do great at one event and then with with the way the contest works if they do great at one event and they get in between guys they can really split up points and that changes the outcome completely so i try to analyze things the best i can 
But when the contest starts, not everything happens the way that you think it's going to happen. So you have to be ready for a little adversity, ready for, you know, some shakeups in the points. And, you know, you just have to handle it and try to take it in stride and stay calm and collected and uh, just go through the contest that way and, and take each event as it comes. The qualifiers to get into the finals spanned over four days. You have six events, so basically it's an entire competition, and out of the six guys in your qualifying group, you have to place in the top two to move on then to the finals. For me, the qualifiers uh, really is more of a tune-up um, in a lot of ways, and that's the way I, I try to um, look at it. It's just a little bit of practice, a feel of the events, and I come in very confident knowing that I, I should get through my qualifying group without putting out a whole lot of effort. Let's give it up for I don't train a lot for the qualifier events unless I feel like there's something that might kind of throw me off. But, you know, for the most part, I look at the finals events and, and train uh, for those specifically. The 10 best men in the world are making it to the final. And sometimes you just have to say goodbye to some old faces. It was fun. I had a good time. My plan was to qualify as easily as I possibly could and, and uh, kind of walk through my group. Um, and, and that happened. I mean, I felt like everything was really easy. And, and when the qualifiers feel that way, when you pick the weights up and they, they feel light, I know that I've peaked correctly, that all my training has worked perfectly and that I came into the contest ready to go. It gives me a good feel of the competition. It gives me a good feel of how my body's feeling, how strong I am. You know, there's a lot of positive things um, come out of the qualifiers, and that's really the main thing is just gaining confidence. So we finished the heats, and it's out of the frying pan and into the fire for these boys as we have six brutal events and 10 men to go. And it starts with one of the most brutal events there is, frame carry. This could tear their hands apart. The first event in the final, there's always a lot of tension in the air, uh, a lot of pressure. Everybody wants to do well. Everybody wants to get off to a good start. And, um, you know, when, when you're warming up, uh, it's, it's very exciting. Experience or not, everybody is nervous for sure. <laughs> I'm just, you know, uh, seeing it in my, you know, hat, you know, how I'm, you know, just going through it back and forth in my hat. Me picking it up and holding it tight and, and running as fast as you can. A little bit nervous, obviously, before the first event. I think everyone is before the first event. You're going to need that one to settle the nerves, and then it's just battle as hard as you can on every event. So it's 360 kilos. We have to pick it up, carry it down 15 meters, turn ourselves around, carry it back as fast as possible. It's all about kind of lower back and leg strength, uh, obviously grip strength as well to hold on to the implements and speed, you've got to be fast. Everyone's going to lift it, it's about who's going to do it quickest. So normally it's a good event for me and um, I could do with a good start. So looking forward to it. 15 meters each way, 30 meters in total. Frame must be off the ground to be carried. There's two fascinating new guys for this final. The man on the far side, Kiliszkowski, who's got a flyer. Keeping up with Lawrence Charlotte of Great Britain right now, Europe's strongest man, and of course, this is nearest to camera. I always try to analyze the competitors the best that I possibly can, but when there's new competitors, you don't have much background on them. And, and uh, Mateusz Kieliszkowski I had in my qualifying group, and I've competed with him in other competitions, and I knew that he would be a name to watch. Give it up for Mateusz Kieliszkowski! <laughs> This just sneaks ahead, the American. Charley, what's happened to Charley? Hopefully it's not an injury. Speed felt really good, grip felt fine. 
obviously this kind of event I'm, is usually a banker for me. I'm probably one of the best in the world at it. And I felt really confident. Turn around, picked it up, a couple of steps in, I felt something kind of go in my calf. Uh, really, really gutted because I honestly believe I could have been top three and really challenged. You know, I would say that uh, Lawrence Chalet, he probably was one of the favorites going into the frame carry. and. You never want to see anybody get hurt at all. And so you, you just kind of feel for the guy. I think you're going to have to pull out just to, due to the nature of the events we've got coming up. Uh, I'm not here to make up numbers this year. I want to challenge to win. And that's not going to happen with a torn calf. So I think that's the end of it for me. They're off. So closest to camera, the reigning well strongest man next to Bjornsson is gone down already. Eddie Hall on the far side there. I don't know what he's doing. He's sliding it. That finger, I guess, being a problem on fingers. Yeah, dislocated two fingers recently. Eddie Hall trying to drag the frame. Can't do that. Janashia doing very well. Well, he's beaten Shaw. Another new boy wins this one. Doesn't beat Kiliskovsky though. It all happens so quick. Once that whistle blows, everything starts, and you know it. Uh, it's over in the blink of an eye. But uh, yeah, it was very important for me with the frame carry. I, I wanted to get off to a good start. I trained that event hard. Uh, that. I'd say the biggest factor with that is the handles that we have to hold on to. And because I have bigger hands, um, I prefer a little bit thicker handle. These happen to be a one inch diameter smooth handle. No knurling on it at all. So there's, there's not a lot of texture to the handles, which makes it even more challenging. I wasn't extremely pleased with my performance on that, but I ended up with a third place, which I wanted to get top three. You always want to try to beat your main competitors in each event if you possibly can. And, and I was able to do that with Hofthor, um, you know, and then obviously Eddie had something wrong with his finger, so he really got hindered in the, uh, in the frame carry. Uh, of course, Hofthor's disappointed. Um, you know, there's certain events that we're counting on coming first for. That wasn't really one of them. What is Bjornsson doing? Well, I mean, he went down within four or five meters at the start. Perhaps his grip's a little bit tired. We still have our eyes on who we believe to be the toughest competitor, which is Brian Shaw. And Brian Shaw came third, Hafthor came fifth. So we're a little bit behind at the moment, but it doesn't mean it's over. There's a lot of great events for Thor coming up, and that's just the way it goes. You can't go back in time, I mean, and, and change anything. So, I, like I said, I was happy, happy with the uh, the third place. Um, of course, you always want to do a little bit better, but you kind of thought that would be the most questionable event in the finals uh, for me, and it, uh, it it played out all right. Definitely played out all right. Our second event is the Circus Barbell. Very much a test of shoulder power, but uh, the way it wobbles about, as you'll soon see, it's a very soft bar, makes it uh, very awkward. Uh, the likes of Eddie Hall, if he can get it up to his shoulders, he should be able to claw back a few points here. Now, the wonder kid from Poland, Kieliszkowski, who won, and won convincingly in that first event, just showed us what a raw talent he is. That, grip didn't give out at all uh, and I do expect him with an Olympic weightlifting background being able to clean and jerk this bar better than others. Janashi in second ah, I think he's a bit of a flash in the pan but we'll soon see he, he, you know he's one of these athletes that uh, no one really regarded in the heats there he is. He's got a raw power to him for sure. Uh, will he be any good at this? Yeah. I expect something decent out of him anyway. Brian Shaw sitting in third, Hapthor just behind. The two big names haven't quite had a perfect start and they're pretty silent over there in the athlete's tent. Uh, not quite soul searching, but knowing that they need to put in a huge performance here. This is no Olympic Games and Olympic weightlifting. This is raw power, this uh, barbell. So the wobbling uh, is part and parcel of this really soft bar. Uh, is there any one way to get it up? No, definitely not. Oh, this is going to be an interesting one because I have no idea how that's going to feel in my hands because it's such an odd implement. Wide, 
bouncy, hard to control, very difficult to clean because it doesn't roll like a normal bar. So it's going to be very difficult to do a normal clean. So you have to do a continental. You first launch it up to your stomach, pop it up, and then lift it. I rely on a split jerk, just like an Olympic weightlifter would, um, to basically launch and get under the weight so I don't have to press it and just pop get right to that lockout position as fast as possible. The circus barbell, that's all you've got to work with. One weight, 163 kg, a minute and 15 seconds. Lift it as many times as you can. These are the guys who've gone so far. Jemanski, Caron, Beljak, Lissis managed six, Janashia managed seven. After the uh, frame carry, the first event, uh, this Konstantin Janashia stepped up kind of out of nowhere. Nobody really knew about him or what to expect from him. And he really came out and, and performed. And, you know, it, it, it was even more apparent after the circus barbell because that was two events then that he had done well. And his consistency, especially for a guy where it's his first time here and he hasn't been through the qualifiers, finals, and the pressure of World's Strongest Man, for him to step up, I mean, it was it was uh, pretty crazy to see that for him. And you know, I know it's it's one of those things. Not a lot of first year uh, competitors can do that. Good speed, good power, and good results. I am happy. Get his Koski, just raw power, and he'll need it up against this guy, Brian Shaw. From the United States of America, Brian Shaw. Going into the uh, circus barbell event, I was I was pretty excited about that actually. I felt like I had trained that hard and was prepared for it. Shaw using his power belly just to hike it up, lock out. 45 seconds to go. No sign of slowing from either man. Big Brian for his fifth. Two more to equal Janashia. He should have plenty of time to do it. And more. Real poise from Kieliszkowski. Number six for Brian. I kind of uh, felt like I ran out of gas a little bit right around a minute, but I had trained hard for that. I, I'd spaced my reps out almost, almost in a way down to the second what I could do. I thought I could do six or seven in a minute. Ended up getting seven, I think, around the minute mark. And then I just, I just didn't have time or I thought I thought I had a little bit more time to do the eighth and I just ran out of time so the eighth would have been big to tie for first in that event with the seven I tied for second hindsight's always 2020 always is and you know I looking back I think that's probably one of the most disappointing things for me I really wish I could have got that eighth because it would have put me in a lot better spot but I did what I could do and you know with it with the changes and things that happened there I just tried my best well, the co-leader then, so far, seven reps for Brian. The first event was a test of grip strength, and Eddie Hall managed to dislocate two fingers before we even started the whole contest. Can he win it now? I'd say, yeah, he still just about could, but the pressure on his damaged fingers will be awful. So we'll, we'll, we'll soon see whether Eddie can handle it. Representing Great Britain, Eddie Hall! This guy's no cat burglar either. Bjornsson, six foot nine. Take your grip! Ready! Fit. Well, that's a quick start. Worth remembering as well that Eddie Hall on the left, kind of playing with two fingers down, dislocated them recently. This will carry with it some extra pain. He's also last in the first event. The frame carry, he just couldn't pick it up at all, so. It's a horrible start for him to the World's Strongest Man Grand Final, but he's making up for it here. He's already bashed out four, Bjornsson just behind. Poise and rhythm, Eddie. Number five, remember, they're chasing seven by Janashia and Brian Shaw, who just ran out of puff after a minute. 30 seconds to go. There's Eddie sick. So he's close, one more. Bjornsson, he too is on six, so it's neck and neck.
Well, the reps aren't timed, so they're both on seven. Yeah, be synchronized swimming for these two next. Incredible. <laughs> oh, Eddie's struggling now. Bjornsson, though, that was impressive. Can Hall get this? He can do anything. Bjornsson going for a ninth. Doesn't get it. I wonder if he thinks he has. But well done, Eddie Hall. He needed that, and he got it. Both men, brilliant athletes, but that was a proper moment. I'm very pleased with that, very happy, you know. All, all that presses have been in the past one of my, you know, weaknesses. Coming here today and beating one of the best in that event. And so close to take overall first place in that event. Of course you want to try to win everything you can, but ending up ending up in a tie for second wasn't it wasn't bad. I mean, you know, the, the consistency is is the key. I obviously look at my own performance first and then I, I definitely keep an eye on where my closest challengers are and where they place because at the end of the day if you want to win you have to beat them too. So Hofthor uh, with the uh, circus barbell made up actually two points because he ended up tying for first, which is nine and a half, and then I tied for second, which is seven and a half. So basically the two points that I gained on him in the in the uh, frame carry were, were now gone, and we were tied, Janashi actually with his uh, se second place in the frame and his tie for second in the circus barbell was actually leading the final after that by one point. So Hofthor and I were one point back on him, and, and uh, it, it was turning into a tight race. So there's a guy that I've never seen before who's first place, so we can't underestimate anyone. There's so many strong guys here. You know, we keep looking at Brian, we're gonna miss the rest of the guys. It's amazing to watch them all, but it's amazing to be equal second with Brian as well because we've got some great events coming up that Thor loves, we've trained hard for, and we're, we're very confident. This afternoon's deadlift, it's on. I knew that, that going into the deadlift, that would be where Hofthor would probably fall down a little bit and that I would be able to, to gain some points on him. The deadlift was big in this competition because um, I felt like that would be one of Hofthor's weaker events and it would be one of my best events. Um, I knew that Eddie would be very strong at that. Uh, so I, I figured that a few points would shift around because also in the final, there were, there were several other great deadlifters. I mean, they, they, uh, it, I, I figured it'd be kind of hard to call and it, it proved to be exactly that way. It was, it was a great, I mean, for the finals, the world's strongest man. I mean, that was a great, great deadlift event. I mean, the performances are, I mean, it's, it's, it's insane uh, how far the, uh, you know, the deadlift numbers have come since I started Strongman. And uh, I mean, the last time we had this event in uh, 2013 on the deadlift, there, the only two men that pulled 420 kilos were Zadrunas and I. So we're joining Eddie now as he attempts 420 kg. Now he needs this to stay in. If he doesn't get it, he is eliminated. Coming into this, I mean, I think there was four or five guys that pulled uh, 420 kilos. So it just shows you how high the level is right now. And, and um, you know, when uh, JF Carone then then pulled the 435, it, it took it up another level. I, I pulled that to Eddie skipped that one. No, he says. That was enough for him. That's very surprising. To uh, Asia, Georgia. Socks. Huge way for him. Done personal best after personal best. He's been the find of the final, but no. No. Another man falls. And then we went to 445, which would break. I actually held the world record on this particular deadlift setup at uh, 442 and a half kilos. So we went to 445. 
Eddie and I were both successful there. JF narrowly missed it. I thought he was going to finish it. JF Caron going for four, four, five kilos, two and a half kilos. Well, Brian Shaw's world record. And up he goes. Will he lock out though? No. Show your appreciation for coming in, JF Caron. Time for Eddie then. Will his tactics have paid off? Four, four, five. Now he's. He's pulled 500 before, but that was with a very different type of bar. That's when he got the world record. Yeah. He had all of his fingers intact then. Too dislocated. This to take Brian Shaw's record. Look at that. He's done it. Another world record. Ladies and gentlemen, a new world record. 445. Eddie takes another world record. Restoring British pride there. Will Brian Saw now reply? Well, <laughs> he'll have to. And can he equal Eddie's world record? Eddie will not want to have to do another lift. His fingers dislocated. Every lift will put him under extreme pain. Well, look at this. Can he do it? Oh my goodness, that was slow off the floor, but he's done it! He's done it! He's equaled Eddie's world record. Put himself right back up there. It was a good contest, and then and then Eddie and I at the end, uh, he kind of felt something in his hamstring is what he said. And, you know, for me, I was kind of, in a lot of ways, I was kind of feeling the same way because once you start deadlifting so many big, big weights, the, uh, you know, the risk for something getting pulled or something happening goes up even more. And, and uh, you know, I was, Eddie would have had to lift the last weight first. And he kind of came over to me and said, look, you know, I'm kind of thinking I'm not gonna pull this one. What do you think? I think that both of us are, are smart in that regard. And, and uh, we shook hands and ended up joint first on that, which is nine and a half points. And um, it just in that one event, I made up three on Hofdor. So, that was that was big. I mean, it was big for Ed too because that that meant that he was two joint first places, which got him right, literally right back in the mix. The deadlift was uh, was tough. You know, um, it's a way. It's quite obvious. Me and Brian are big pullers. You know, uh, and, you know we could have gone on and done more lifts and more lifts, but you know my my hamstrings were tight, and I spoke to Brian, and he was the same. So I just don't think it was worth the risk to do another pull, rip a hamstring off, and then drop out the contest. So we've, we've split the points, we shared first place. Gentlemen's agreement, we both shoot cans. And we're both happy with that, you know, and we can move on with the rest of the final intact. I always like to see a clear winner in an event, but sometimes you just have to accept it and split the points. You know, for me, it put me in the lead then after day one by a couple points, which which was perfect. I mean, there's, you know, you can't ask for more than to be leading uh, leading the final, and especially with, you know, with the way the uh, the events had gone, it, um, it you know, you, you can go back and, and you can pick apart every single event and say, I could have done this and I should have done this, but when you're actually in the competition and one event ends, you have to it, close that chapter, if you will, and move on to the next event, and that's what I tried to do. And you know, the deadlift worked out good. I was happy, and, and uh, moving on with the contest. The plane pole was uh, a, a neat setting. It was, uh, you know, at the airport there, and I was uh, confident, very confident with that event. And I, I told myself that, you know, if I went out and, and won the plane pole, the contest was over. That's kind of how I felt because the upcoming events were so strong for me, I just felt like there that would that would be it. It's certainly a day for the big men to start off well. Brian Shaw at the moment is in the lead and he's the biggest of all of them on 25 points. Uh, Constantine Janashia, I think he might lose a few points here. Uh, he doesn't quite have the bulk, the mass uh, of some of the others. He's in second, so uh, perhaps his tremendous first run at World's Strongest Man might just slow a little here. Thor in third. You know, he's won World's Strongest Man's truck pulls in the past. Whether he'll have it for the plane pull, I think he's probably a little lighter than Brian. Uh, and that really does help the size. But Big Ed, you know, Ed's just about as heavy as those fellas, despite being six inches shorter, and he currently sits in fourth. 
So Eddie Hall next to take on the Hercules, the plane pool. He's tied first in the last two events. Spectacular comeback from last place to fourth. You really do need all four limbs working properly and with two fingers dislocated, you can't imagine he can get a really good pull with that left arm, but he's doing very well, he's got this up to speed. It's also just worth pointing out again, this is a man, a human man, pulling a plane. Well, 24.45 metres. He's in the lead. Please welcome from Iceland, Hafthor Bjorkstad. We want to come first in this. We need to come first uh, in all three events if we want to come first overall, really. So it's a yeah, little bit of pressure. Um, but, yeah, he works well under pressure. So hopefully it's a good day. Twenty-four point four five to beat. He's up to twenty. A little more effort here from Hafthor Bjornsson. He's slowing. He wasn't as quick as Eddie Hall was there, but he's keeping it coming. I think he could get over the line. Oh, he's past Eddie Hall. Don't stop now. Twenty-four point seven nine eight two eight six. And he stopped at 24.9 metres, 10 centimetres away from the line. Well, he's been told he's gone into the lead, but not exactly ecstatic. He's absolutely exhausted. Looking back, I, I might have put too much pressure on myself with that event and, and almost wanted it too bad instead of just going out there and doing, doing what I know I can do. I mean, I started out of the gate and I got the plane going left, um, which, you know, I, I had already looked at the run. I had already looked at, at where it was going to go. And there wasn't there wasn't a lot of room on either side uh, for the plane. So if you got it going one way or the other, basically you were screwed. Um, and I, in a lot of ways, when I started going left, I kind of panicked and tried to bring it back right. And then doing that, I didn't build hardly any momentum. My start was terrible. Um, it was a grind. It was a real grind to try to bring it back. And I literally had to pour out everything. I knew that I was in trouble after the start because what you want to do is you want to try to pull it in a straight line, a dead straight line and build as much momentum as possible. And with the start and the way that my pull went, it was awful. Man, second place for the normally unbeatable Brian Shaw. 24.53 and well satisfaction for a job well done for Bjornsson it's probably my worst pull ever at world's strongest man I mean and, and that's that's saying a lot but it, it really was I almost couldn't have done it worse and I still ended up in second place. And, you know, Hofdor gained a point on me, which, you know, obviously that was the guy that I wanted to beat in that event. And him gaining that point gave him a little bit of life. Uh, but, you know, it could have, in reality, with the way that my poll went, it could have been worse for me. I'm very happy with this win. It obviously thought for me to win the World Series, but I don't. The next two events, I'm a past event. But I have to give it you know, 100%. I'm ready. And I believe, I believe this year is my title. Uh, he's got two really, really good events for him coming up. And he basically needs to win both of them. And uh, if he does, he can get the title. There's nobody harder on me than me, you know? So I was, I was disappointed with that, uh, you know, I, I I don't know, it, you know, it's just one of those things. I think, almost, like I said, I almost put too much pressure on myself to perform. And um, sometimes 
just going out there and, and staying cool and calm is the best way to go. But at the end of the day, I still walked out with a second place, which, you know, consistency again is the, is the key to winning. So, you know, second place, you can't be too upset with that, especially with the way the event went. I think it's fair to say we're down to a battle for first between Thor and Brian Shaw. So I think this will go down to the wire, just as the plane pull uh, has proved that, that these two men are very close. I thought Thor would win the deadlift and I thought Brian would win the plane pull, but it was the other way around. So who knows what's going to happen? You know, the kettlebell throws a, a, a very challenging event. The weights of the kettlebells Basically, they increase as you go. Uh, the first three are the same, and then the last four get a lot heavier. I was very confident with the kettlebell throw. I, I, I trained that very hard. Uh, the weights, the heavier they go, the better they are for me. The lighter, you know, Hawthorne would probably like it to be a little bit lighter because he's typically very fast uh, with his throwing events. So I knew that there would be a lot of pressure on him in that moment, and I, I felt like he'd be putting the pressure on himself. Second place overall after four events. Chasing his first World Strongest Man title. Confident star, <laughs> look at that. Oh, oh, oh. Look at the distance he's throwing it from as well. One of the guys taking it right under the bar. He's just launching these. Well, with only 15 seconds gone, he looks unstoppable. He didn't even look there. <laughs> no, didn't do it, didn't manage it. Well, this is potentially a turning point for Bjornsson. I mean, he, he kind of didn't get quite in the right position for the, the sixth uh, kettlebell. Missed it, then kind of panicked, um, and then ended up getting it over, but his time just wasn't there. He tried the seventh, didn't have the power for the seventh. So I knew that the door was wide open, literally just wide open. So I, with that one, I had kind of just told myself, I'm going to stay calm. I know how good I am at this. It, with the kettlebell throwing, so I just walked out there and said, all I have to do is, I don't even have to put on my best performance. Literally, he left the door so wide open, it was like a hallway to walk through, you know, for me. So I just walked out there, I just grabbed every one of them, very controlled, very, just a good rhythm, I found, and, and did everyone the same. You know what, it last as well actually allows him to be measured here. Bjornsson went absolutely bonkers there, knowing that Shaw would be quick too, but Shaw doesn't have to be quick now, he can just relax. He knows what he's up against, he knows what he has to do. It's the biggest advantage, psychologically, he could have ever have been handed. I've walked through the sixth one, through it easily, and that at that moment, uh, winning that event was huge, huge. So I, I celebrated, I kind of let that, I just let that breath of, of relief out in a way. And then I said, you know what, all these, all these fans are here, everybody, Everybody came out, you know, they're all cheering and stuff, so I'm gonna grab the seventh one. And we did that for the crowd, and you know, it would have been nice to throw it over, of course, but it was, you know, winning the event was huge uh, at that very moment because that put me back up by three points, and that's exactly what I needed to do at that point in the contest. To me, Atlas Stones represent strongman. It is a true strongman staple. Because to lift an Atlas Stone, you need to be strong in every single part of your body and have everything tuned and working together. Because on the first pick, you first of all need a strong chest and shoulders just to squeeze that stone. There's no handles. So you're hugging it as hard as you can. Then you squat it up using your legs and back, place it on your legs, and then pop it up and over. So you use everything to get a stone up. This is it. This is what we've been waiting for. And since oof, 2010, it's come down to the stones. And again, we've got Big Brian against the mighty Thor. Three points in it. 
and Thor likes to call himself the king of the stones for very good reason. He is tremendous at them. So Brian probably will feel quite happy he's got a three-point cushion. One little slip, uh, then, you know, it's over. So these guys will still be very nervous. Anything can still happen. There's a great battle for third as well. Eddie Hall versus Janashia. I believe there's one point in it. So basically, if Hall manages to beat him, then they'd be equal on points. He'd beat him on uh, time on Atlas Stone. That is the trump card. Little fumble there by Janashia. And Eddie Hall is in the lead at the moment. Chasing third place right now. He's ahead of Janashia. Whoever wins this will be the world's third strongest man. One hand on the bronze trophy. If he can pop this up, he'll make it happen. There it is. Eddie Hall, the Brit, the beast, is on the podium. Lovely sporting touch there from Janashia as well, raising his arm. Third place, I'm not happy with that. You know, I feel good, but um, the, dream, the dream's not come true yet, you know. So another year, you know. I've got to do it. I've got to do another year now. I want to win the world's strongest man. That's the aim. That's the title. I want it. So just just walking out on that stage uh, in World's Strongest Man, the last event, the Atlas Stones, you know, all the all the people there, everything's on the line. That moment is what all the hard training is for. So this is it. This is what we've been waiting for. Well, the man defending his title, Brian Shaw, will now go up head-to-head -head against the man who, who wants that title more than almost anybody, Bjornsson. It's very simple now, having seen the others go. That's what he's gunning for, Brian Shaw. All five stones in less than 34 seconds, and he will be the world's strongest man. Can Bjornsson beat him? But it's not down to that, it's down to Shaw, really, and what he does. So again, all five stones in less than 34, and he's defended his title, looks set to easily do it. Bjornsson's got the last one up, but what about Shaw? He's done it in around 28 seconds, and meaning he is the world's strongest man. I had a three-point lead on Hofthor, and basically that, that was the competition, really, was those three points. So he needed to come first, and I would have had to have come fourth in order to lose. And so basically, what I told myself was, right, I'm gonna go out here, I'm just gonna have a really controlled stone run. I'm not gonna try to push. I'm gonna, you know, if he wants to go crazy, which he knew he had to go crazy to try to win it, I'm just, I'm just gonna do a solid run, and that's easily gonna put me into second place with the way the, co the competitors before had gone. I didn't have to do anything special, I just had to do it. But a lot of times when you start rushing and really pushing and going hard, that's when you bobble a stone, when you drop something, when you slip, when you do something wrong. And so I just, I was very controlled. I did what I had to do. And that is locking up the title. And that's exactly what I did. Um, we're close, you know, I, I fought all the way through. I did my best, but I was better man today. He's a great athlete, great someone, and I'm happy for him. It's just everything you work for. Everything in that moment is, is putting up those stones, winning the title, that's what I came here to do. That's, that's exactly what I, I planned on getting done and, and uh, everything worked great. And, and uh, I put so much thought and effort and time into the preparation to win. So when you actually win, it's almost surreal, but it's a great feeling, great feeling. Stepping up on the podium and, and receiving the first place trophy, I mean, I've, I've had that privilege uh, already three times. This was the fourth time, and, and it's really hard to put into words, uh, you know, what it's like because you're literally the strongest man in the world. I enjoy winning, and so I'll let that sink in, but to be fair, I still feel like I'm, I'm still getting better. I still feel like there's areas that I can improve. Even at this point in my career, I'm still learning. I'm still learning that and, and uh, I'm still excited to train. I'm still excited to go do it. So 
I think the focus will be 100% on, on getting number five next.